Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be adding powers of i. So we have i to the fourth power plus i to the ninth power plus i to the sixteenth power all the way up to 400 where all the powers of i are perfect squares starting with 2 squared and then 3 squared and then 4 squared all the way up to 20 squared. So we talked about some sums before, right? Different sums that we can do. Powers of i, consecutive integers, evens, odds, triangular numbers. I don't know. We, I, I don't think we've done hexagonal. But anyways, there's a lot of good problems that you can do with this. But per, particularly for this one, we, we're going to look for a pattern. So how do you add perfect powers, perfect square powers of i? Let's go ahead and talk about it. And I'm also going to show you some results from Wolfram Alpha, which are pretty interesting, at least to me. So how do we add these powers? Let's take a look at a couple of them to get the idea. Obviously, there aren't that many terms. We can all list them out, but that's not the point. i to the fourth power, as you should know, is 1. Because by definition, i squared is negative 1. And if you square both sides, you get 1. i to the ninth, and now from uh, since we know that i to the fourth is 1, we can kind of write i to the ninth as i to the fourth squared, and that makes i to the eighth, and multiply by a single i, and you'll get the answer. Since i to the fourth is 1, this is always going to be i to the first, or just i. So from the first two terms, we're getting 1 plus i. What about the next one? What about i to the sixteenth? Hmm, i to the sixteenth, since 4 is a factor of 16, we can kind of write it as i to the fourth to the fourth, kind of double fours, and this gives us 1 again. So it's kind of like 1i, 1i. Do you think that's going to go like that? Looks like it. There seems to be a pattern, but let's go ahead and be more technical and see a little uh, deeper. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. With consecutive powers of i, if you remember, that was kind of easy because that gave us a cycle. This gave us negative 1, this gave us negative i, so on and so forth. So every consecutive four terms add up to 0. But in this case, that's not the case. Nothing cancels out or nothing at least seems to cancel out. So how do I approach it? We can go ahead and consider two cases. And that's a little bit of modular arithmetic, a little bit of number theory here and there. So this is what it is. The exponent of i... Oh, by the way, one thing that I want to talk about before I get into that discussion is can we express this using the sigma notation? Because that's going to come up later. So let's go ahead and try to express this using sigma n equals 2. Since it starts with 2 squared, I'm going to start at 2 and end at 20. So n equals 2 through 20. And we're talking about sums of powers of i where the power is basically n squared. So we were able to express how compact, right? express the sum using the sigma notation. So this is what we're looking for. And of course, this can be generalized. Again, we're going to look at a couple other things a little bit later. So let's see how we can approach the two cases, what I meant by number theory. So the exponent of i is an integer in this case, a perfect square, but it's still an integer, right? It can be either odd or even. Think about it. 4 is odd. 4 is odd? No, I don't think so. Okay, never mind. 4 is even, 9 is odd. So what do you do? You consider two cases. So I'm talking about i to the power k. Now, if k, by the way, I can consider the case where n is odd or n is even. Not, let's not get into k. Now, if n is odd, what's going to happen? I can basically express it as 2k plus 1. And then n squared, because my exponent, notice that my exponent is not n, it is n squared. It's a perfect square. n is an integer, right? I hope that makes sense. So now n equals 2k plus 1. k is an integer. And now n squared is going to be 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. Awesome. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is the fourth power of i and any power that's a multiple of 4 is going to give you 1. So it might be helpful to four, take out a 4, right? And then our i to the power n squared is going to be i to the power 4 times k squared plus k plus 1, which can then be written as i to the power 4 
k squared plus k times i and now here this is going to be one as you know right because it's i to the fourth to the power something else some other integer so this is going to be i so if in other words if n is odd then i to the power n squared is going to be i make sense what happens if n is even if n is even then i to the power n squared is going to be i to the power now we have to write it as 2k and it's just going to be 4k squared right and 4k squared is a multiple of 4 so we can kind of write it as i to the fourth to the power k squared where k is an integer and i to the fourth is always 1 right so this is going to be 1 so i to the n squared is going to be 1 if n is even make sense so if n is even, we're going to get 1. If n is odd, we're going to get i. So now let's take a look at this sum one more time. i to the 4th plus i to the 9th plus i to the 16th. Let's write a couple more terms to get a better idea. And then maybe i to the power 361, which is 19 squared, by the way. And this is 400 is the last term, right? So take a look. First of all, we need to consider two cases. You could separate them, but I don't think that's necessary. But start with the even because 2 squared uh, or 2 is an even number. So we're going to start with 1. As you know, this is 1, this is i, this is 1, this is i. That kind of explains why it goes like this. So we know we have a pattern. And notice that with the odd powers, it's going to be i and otherwise it's going to be 1. Now here's the million dollar question. How many terms are there? There is an odd number of terms because when we pair up the ones and i's in this order, we have a leftover. Does that make sense? But how many terms are there? We need to know. It's 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way up to 20 squared. To find the number of terms, you have to consider 1 squared through 20 squared. There are 20 terms that we're missing 1 squared. So there are 19 terms. Makes sense? So since we have 19 terms, 19 terms means 9 pairs plus one more term right and nine pairs each pair adds up to one plus i so we're going to have one plus i times nine plus the last term adds up to one so this is going to be the sum which is 10 plus 9i and do you think you can generalize this probably take a look at some um you know couple cases like and with 19 and with 15 and with 25 and then see if you can come up with so in this case we basically added i 2 squared through i 20 squared and we came up with something like this see if you can come up with a formula and then we're going to compare your findings with what we get from wolfram alpha and yay here's the sigma notation we just talked about it and wolfram alpha good job can evaluate this sum Awesome. And then when I asked a general question like, can you evaluate this sum? It gave me this thing. I don't know what it means. Difference root, y, and what, something, something. But as you can see here, for different cases, we get different sums. And hopefully, you can give me a better formula. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another, next time with another video. Until then. Be safe, take care, and bye-bye.